Hello, everyone, and welcome to Job Board Geek. It's the podcast about the business of connecting candidates and employers. I'm Jeff Dickey Chasens. I'm the host, the Job Board Doctor. And with me is my co host, the visionary Stephen Rothberg of College Recruiter. Hey, Stephen, how are things today? Things are great. We just finished our two day, nine hour per day, all Zoom meeting for our annual planning. So if I look a little bleary eyed, it's not the tequila. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, I remember those planning meetings. Uh, now that I'm a solo operator, I don't do them with myself, although perhaps I could. That's why you're uh, happy, of, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or crazy, one or the other. Um, I'm really excited today because we have uh, someone that I've known for a while, Matt Lucas of Job Monkey, here to talk to us about his unique set of job sites and information sites. But first, just wanted to chat a little bit with you, Stephen, about some news that I uh, stumbled upon this week. Stack Overflow is getting rid of their jobs, and I will let Stack Overflow talk for themselves. While talent and jobs helped us get to where we are over the past decade, the talent acquisition space is not one where we have a strong competitive advantage. Really? As far as I know, they were one of the dominant forces in the tech job posting world. So I was a little surprised by that, but they've decided to shut it down. And first of all, I just want to say I have to applaud them for the transparency. It was right Mm -hmm. there on their site and they talked to their people and they said, this is why we're doing it. There was a long string of comments from people saying, oh, this is horrible. Oh, you know, I love this. I love the jobs feature. I found all my jobs through Stack Overflow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was really, really interesting. And, and Stephen, I guess the only two things I really have to say about this is that they did say they're going to stay in on what I would call what they call employer branding, yeah, which throws them in uh competing against Glassdoor, Fairy Godboss, The Muse, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to ask yourself, so does this mean like employer branding is finally catching some momentum here or is it just kind of a blip? And I think the second thing, which is kind of obvious, but I'll point it out anyway, is there's a huge hole in the tech recruiting space now. And the question is, who's going to take advantage of that hole? Is Dice going to jump in there and really, you know, kick ass or are we going to see some other company that is sort of a second tier competitor like Toptal at this point get bigger? Or will it be a as yet unknown competitor pop in? I really have no idea. After all, I didn't even know that these guys were dropping their jobs. But what do you think? Yeah. So uh, f- I think you and I basically found out within minutes of each other. It was it was. Sort of pretty big um, news to the geeks in the job board industry. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I had within probably an hour of hearing about what Stack Overflow was doing, I happened to have um, a conversation with a um, um, a account director at one of the big employment advertising agencies. And um, she was, to put it mildly, uh, distraught. (laughs) So she was telling me uh, that she was really ticked off because literally a week before her stack overflow salesperson was encouraging her to sign up all these clients of theirs to big annual posting packages. So it really caught her unaware and that um, a lot of their clients do their media planning on an annual basis. This was a strategic um, job board for them. So they had allocated a significant portion of their spend to it. Mm-hmm. And now she's got to go back to those same clients and basically say, Hey, I didn't know that this was coming. And, you know, I saw your newsletter um, where basically Stack Overflow in April 2021, so a little under a year ago, was kind of telling people, Hey, we're going to be making changes. We're not going to tell you exactly what they are because probably we don't know yet. Um, but um, there was remarkably great transparency in the announcement the other day, but mm-hmm. a real lack of transparency prior to that. Um, right. I talked when I talked with her, it was interesting because on the one hand she was saying, this is a really, really key job board that our clients use. On the other hand, what she said was 
that the results that their her clients were getting and her word was was negligible or were and so the response rate to the postings was negligible and yet they're recommending those postings to um, to their clients and those two things don't hmm. quite go together for me. Yeah, that's that's that is kind of odd. Well, I guess we're just going to find out what happens, right? Um, it's it's an unusual thing. It's not something that I really expected to be talking about, but you know, that's what makes life interesting. That's why we're job board geeks because we do find this stuff interesting. And speaking of interesting, we have here today Matt Lucas of Job Monkey. He finds all this stuff interesting. He looks fascinated <laughs> at this point, but um, he's also been in this industry for a very long time. So, uh, Matt, welcome to Job Board Geek. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm glad that you could come on. Um, why don't you tell uh, the listeners a little bit about yourself and how you got into the job board industry and how Job Monkey and all of the other associated sites that you have uh, started up. Okay. So um, I'm based out of Seattle, Washington. Um, I was a serial entrepreneur since college, basically, where I started four companies in college. One of them was an information products or publishing company, which we'll talk about. Um, but I also had a suntan lotion company and a real coconut shell and a travel company and a college promotions company. Um, I think I started out or the, how my publishing company and the first business really started was in high school, I'd heard all these rumors about how you can make all this money working up in Alaska fishing industry. But this is back in the 80s. There was no, there was no internet, no information available or anything. So I convinced two of my buddies to jump in a Volkswagen bug. We drove up to Alaska um, and ended up in a town called Ketchikan in Southeast Alaska um, about three or four weeks before the season started. We each started with $300, no credit cards, no cell phones, obviously no internet. Um, wow. Got there like three to four weeks before the season started. We had to live in the woods off of like $3 a day, basically, dodging the rangers, <laughs> trying to collect campsite <laughs> money. Um, and we survived, but there's a lot of like hardship that we had for that first three weeks before we got jobs in the boats. So when I was up there, I was like, God, if there was a if there was a guide that would have told us like when to go, where to go, what to bring, all the kind of basic information, that would have really helped out. So I started jotting down notes even before I got my job. And then when I was on the boat, we'd go to different fishing ports and I'd hop off and I'd kind of run around a little bit and, <laughs> and, and talk to people and so forth. And then my freshman year, fall quarter, I wrote the first author authoritative guide on working in the Alaska fishing industry, uh, self-published it, sold it directly to college students, uh, starting off mail order, then became an uh, inbound call center thing. Ended up being the Bible of working up there, really. Um, about 80% of the people that went up to Alaska for the next you know, 10 plus years. I still have a site that's based on it now, so it's still kind of the authoritative guide um, that everyone would use the this book and they'd guide them up there. And, and originally I thought it was just people on the West coast I'd want to go, but then people in, you know, Minnesota, Michigan, Florida, everywhere, everyone kind of wanted this big adventure to Alaska to, to experience um, kind of what Alaska was about, but also to potential making good money. So uh, after the first year, I started thinking about, okay, what other cool jobs would college students mm -hmm. want to do? And one of the buddies that went up with me to Alaska was going to teach English in Taiwan that uh, next ah. calendar year, basically. So I had him, uh, we put together an outline. I had him um, kind of do a bunch of research and wrote a book on that. Then we did one on, I think I'm working on a cruise ship. We did, um, by the time I I sold the company, um, we had 15 different guides. They're all about two to 300 pages long. This Again, this is pre-internet. Um, got it up to... I think it was like $8 million in sales or close to $8 million in sales, sold it to a wow. company in Michigan, a great um, marketing company there that we used to do business with, um, um, sold to them in 1997, um, moved over there on an employment co contract, three-year employment contract. In 97, and we started like really doing internet kind of stuff in 95. Uh, we already had a, a kind of a small little team set up. We're trying to figure out how to make it work. And back then, no one knew what to do. There, mm -hmm. you know, it was taboo to sell on the internet and all this kind of stuff. And but you knew it was going to be something. Well, when we got over there, they decided that um, internet was not going to be really anything big. So they wanted to just <laughs> stay with the paper products. And I were like, going, no, but it was, it was at a time when internet was cannibalizing sales. Like shortly after I sold it, literally everyone thought they can get all their information for free on the internet. 
really bad information out there, but no one really wanted to pay anymore for, you know, products because they could just look on the internet. It's, it's new mm-hmm. and so forth. So, um, in 1999, I just saw it. That is okay. This is doomed here. So um, I uh, negotiated with the, the owner of the company and bought back all the IP and put it online um, for free under JobMonkey. So we had a huge ah. advantage then in 99 because we had, I think it was about 5,000 pages worth of content that was all written in-house, really high quality content. Um, so immediately the search engines loved us. We got like side of the day and side of the week by Yahoo, like shortly after launching. So our traffic shot up. Um, and for years, even now, just because of, of our deep content, that's all solely written by us and not shared with anyone else. Um, we've done really well organically in the search engine. So, um, so, uh, it's imp- it's impressive. Yeah. So, uh, wow. So I, I bet that I was one of your customers. <laughs> you may have been. I should look it up. <laughs> yeah, I, you should have a have a look in your database. And and um, but kind of when you started, I was in college, and I definitely remember buying like a pamphlet book kind of thing about fishing in Alaska, and because the money was really great, and a lot of young people went and did that. And the more that I read, the more I was convinced. Hell no. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so that's a good thing, right? It's it's not a bad thing for candidates to, to yes. self opt out if they're if they're not a good fit. No. Um, but I would have been a danger to myself and others on those boats with without a doubt. Um, so I, I it's kind of hard for me to physically cause any harm when running a job board. But um, yeah, it's, so, it's not for everyone. But uh, yeah, I worked. May- so the first uh, the, the first two months I was on the boat, I worked. 18 hours a day for 30 days straight, got a week of kind of partial time in another. So it taught you how to work. And if you weren't a good worker or couldn't handle that, then there's no way that that and the, on the type of boat I was on, there's other types of fishing boats where you don't have to work that hard. It's kind of different work. But the type I was on, you worked every day it was or every second it was light out. You had the, that gear in the water, basically. So. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. One of uh, one one of my kids did tree planting in British Columbia. That's probably another oh, nice. one that, that you focus yep. on. And and basically, other than black flies and bears, there's really no hazard. Um, they actually were more worried about the black flies eating them than the bears, but the bears also. Um, so question for you, you mentioned, you know, being yeah. very content rich. And I think that that's an mm-hmm. area that um, virtually every job board knows that that's a good strategy to have a lot of really good yep. content. Um, couple things. One is, okay, so you kind of basically started with a whole wealth of, of content. Um, so one question that um, I'd like to, to have you address is sort of what are you doing now? You know, flash forward 20, 25 years mm-hmm. is, you know, how are you generating that content? And the other thing is when I was on your site, um, I noticed that what you've done way better than what we at College Recruiter have and, and probably most other job boards is really integrate job search links into your content. So if I'm mm-hmm. reading an article about Alaska salmon fishing, I can click on a link there and go to the jobs on your site that offer Alaskan salmon fishing jobs. Um, yep. That extra step is surprisingly um, missed by a lot of job okay. boards. So maybe you can kind of address your your content strategies and tactics. So, yeah. Um, so we try to identify areas that we think are, are cool, interesting, or give some kind of... Uh, um, experience or opportunity to make good money or something that we think would fit into the job monkeys, kind of what our, our uh, mantra is there. Um, and we, we develop an outline and then we either, we used to write a lot of the content in-house, but now we uh, find a domain expert, um, someone in the, in the field usually and pay them um, to write it for us. And we edit it ourselves in-house and then, then we'll publish it. Um, we're up to... 80 something industries or verticals that we've have pretty uh, detailed content on. Um, there's a number of other ones that we are one want to add. We've slowed down a little bit over the last couple of years of adding new content. Um, our strategy has been, and it's not the right or wrong, but we do what's called evergreen content. So we do content mm-hmm. that, you know, is not like current event stuff that much, but it's, it's more this content, you write it once and then you have to go back and, modified a little bit as things change in the industry, but it can last, you know, years basically, um, with, with minor modifications. So, 
Um, so that makes it more efficient. Um, it's hard to always have, and, and you guys are, or at least, uh, uh, Jeff, you do a lot of obviously what's going on right now, which is fantastic, but it means you've got to write stuff every day or every couple of days or like this. We can take some breaks in there and, and, and not really develop content if we feel we need to use those resources somewhere else. So, yeah, actually, you know, that's kind of interesting that you say that because originally my content strategy was a hundred percent evergreen stuff. And in fact, the most popular stuff on my blog is stuff that literally I wrote five or seven years ago that are all about revenue strategies and, you know, how, how do you make a decision about what you want to offer employers and that sort of thing. But I've also found that if I layer in that, that news stuff, you know, like the stack overflow stuff mm -hmm. that tends to keep new people coming in, uh, to my site. So it's, you know, I kind of, I kind of split the difference and I've had some clients that, that try that strategy as well. But like you said, that means you're continually re re reinventing and reworking the news and the current event type stuff. So yeah. it's, it's, it's just a different too, approach. It's just depending on what you choose to do, or if you do, you can do both, but it's just, you know, that's a whole different way of doing it than evergreen. So it just depends. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, well, are. so, so you gave us a pretty nice overview of how the site came about and how the structure works and whatnot. Um, what, it, what sorts of challenges, or I, I should say, what is the latest challenge that you faced with your business? Cause I, I, and I say, I'm, I'm sort of laughing about that because you, uh, you gave a presentation at a conference that I was at and you talked about the many challenges that you've gone yes. through over the years, like, like anyone that's run a business, uh -huh. but, um, what's the latest challenge that you've had to fight and, and, and surmount? Let me see if you guys can guess. So if, if your <laughs> website is all about leaving your hometown and working different places around the U S or world, um, mm. what might it be right now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, no, COVID's been brutal. Um, luckily, you know, it didn't affect all of our industries that we cover, but it affected a lot of them. And it's been pretty, you know, it's been pretty hard because it's, I mean, what my core, what I really like about Job Monkey is I like people to travel. I like people to have new mm -hmm. experiences, to get out of their hometown, yeah. to kind of, you know, they're maybe not, they're not comfortable going over to Portugal or France or something like this, but they might be comfortable going across their state or across a few states and working at a summer camp or working at a resort or something like that. So I think that's very important for people. Um, and U.S. you know residents don't do it nearly as much as some other countries. And I think it's just something that you know. So I can't change the world with this, but I, I can do a little bit to just try to help promote that. So yep. So I have to ask you then, Matt, um, do you have a, I didn't see this, but do you have a section uh, in, in the Job Monkey universe that focuses on jobs in Iowa? Uh, well, n n no, not a specific state, but there's probably <laughs> companies that, you know, I'm not, can't even think of what industries we might have. There's probably something there, Jeff, if you really want to move across. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking. So, so Matt, I'm pretty confident uh -huh. that if you were to build a section on Iowa, they will come. They will come. <laughs> oh, <geez>. nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess this must be heaven, right? Field yeah. of Dreams um, reference. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got yeah. it. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. So, so talk to us a little bit about the uh, revenue model for Job Monkey. Are you like most job boards? Are you dependent? primarily on employer revenue or are you, do you have multiple revenue streams? We do have multiple revenue streams. So um, advertising was actually uh, for a bunch of years was the majority of our revenue um, mm -hmm. because we had so much content. We were able to monetize those pages with uh, Google's AdSense and then uh, some direct advertising and so forth. That has died down quite a bit in the last uh, bunch of years, um, just as far as what you make per thousand page views and so forth. It's gone down significantly. We still a decent part of our revenue, but um, but it's much smaller than it, what it was. So uh, we have um, you know your standard uh, job board revenues with um, we've gone and, and kind of thanks to Steve and Faith uh, or Stephen and Faith, um, we've gone performance based. We've offered a product last year that we're still getting um um, our customers converted over to, but that's kind of, we don't want to do as much 
duration-based job postings anymore. We want to just uh, do it on a performance level. And it, I think it's better for everyone. And, and the way we do it, it makes it really easy for an employer to um, get started up with us. And it's hands-free almost because we we either take the feed or or uh, mirror their, their job board and just um, the jobs coming off on and off our site as they manage their own job postings, wherever they manage them at. So, um, Wow, that's cool. And that makes a lot of sense given the uh, amount of content that you have and, and sort of the size, I would think, of in terms of number of pages and the, the overall traffic that you must have from, mm-hmm. all, the, from all the different pages. Um, you more than, than many job boards that have been focused on duration-based. So I guess the final question I have, and then we'll probably uh, need to wrap it up, but I'm, I'm just curious, what are your plans going forward as we climb out of COVID? Um, are you imagining, do you have some big, uh, new things that you'd like to roll out for, for job monkey? We do. Um, well, we're, I mean, continue to the conversion to performance space is obviously a major one for us and, um, and kind of work up or work down the funnel, maybe a little bit. I know it's harder to work down to, you know, cost per hire, but Mm -hmm. we might play around with, you know, some other things in there, but there's so many factors that come in play there that are outside our control um, just as far as, you know, the, the job position, the title, how it's written, how they hire, all that kind of stuff. So and we'll see where we can work down there a little further with certain employers. Um, I love the work from anywhere uh, aspect of the world now. I absolutely mm-hmm. love it. Uh, the, the tr- and I love digital nomad too, like the traditional digital nomad. That mm-hmm. wasn't really working as well for job, like, even though we we're starting to get into it, but it was a little more um, originally, you know, uh, either creative jobs or programming jobs and so forth. Um, but the work from anywhere aspect, or, but I guess both of them now, we're just, we want to convert a little bit more into that because I just think that's a fantastic opportunity beyond the college or recent graduate aspect of it. And I'm not sure if that's going to be in a separate site or if it's going to be on JobMonkey fully. Um, we're still kind of playing around with how to how to address it. We'll, we'll definitely have it on JobMonkey, but we might do a full-blown kind of um, play into that. So. Yeah, I I would think actually, you know, you look at old guys like me, um, I would be very interested in looking at jobs that had me moving around in different places, working for six months here, four months there, that were not necessarily technical based, you know, working on a fishing boat, planting trees, being attacked by black flies and so on. (laughs) Uh, So, uh, you know, I mean... That's still job monkey. So, I mean, there, we, have, we get retirees or people that want to do a career change or just kind of burn out using job monkey all the time. So it's not just a college site. Um, oh, but, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and we get, that's, that's probably 20 or 30% of our traffic actually. So. Yeah. But, well, I know and, what I'm doing after I get off this recording. So <laughs> yeah. I, Jeff, I think, I think what you're envisioning Jeff too is, is like, is doing more of that project-based kind of work a month here, six months there, three months someplace else. You know, if you're in marketing, for example, right, being right. able to move around, maybe you're doing a marketing project in oil and gas for a Houston based company and they don't care where you are. So that's when you can go to Alaska and be up there in the summertime and be working for that Houston based company. Or there's an Alaskan company who kind of wants you on site for three months and then right. and then not after that. Um, that kind of remote work, I think, has become much more feasible for everybody. Employers are starting to realize they can do it and candidates are saying, okay, I'm ready. When do I, when do I leave? Yeah. 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 Exactly right. That's interesting. Well, I mean, I think one thing we can all agree is that the world of work continues to be changing and the uh, pandemic has certainly given it a good kick in the rear in terms of changing more rapidly than it had been. So uh, Matt, if people want to get in touch with you after listening to this podcast, how can they do that? Oh, sure. So um, you can either send me an email at matt, M-A-T-T, at jobmonkey.com. You can go to the website, jobmonkey.com, use the contact form there. That'll that'll come to me. Um, or on LinkedIn, uh, Matthew Lucas 5. So um, any one wow. of those works, but I'd love to hear that's, from you. That's so. a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I wish I was just one. I was with a zero or nothing there, but five, you know, I guess it'd be five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, LinkedIn yep. tells you what 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 it will be, and you don't have any choice. So, well, yep. Matt, thanks so much for coming on. Okay. We really appreciate it. Well, thanks, and great job, you guys. You guys are doing awesome. Yep.
Thanks. Great. Thanks a lot. Okay. And, and Stephen, if uh, folks want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Sure. Uh, reach out Stephen at college recruiter dot com. And uh, Matt, it has been awesome reconnecting with you. Likewise. Yep, definitely. And I, I, I know that if you're listening on the podcast, obviously you can't see anything. But one of the, the great things about this particular podcast is that we have three radically different backgrounds. Uh, <laughs> my background is its usual boring Elvis Costello poster and radiator behind me. Steven looks like he's in some sort of serial killer's lair. And then Matt <laughs> is in this wonderful light room with a fire burning behind him with plants. So I think if if we're going to be doing any rating, I think Matt wins this one. So nice. anyway, <laughs> that's it for this episode of Job Board Geek. Uh, please be sure to subscribe any way you want. We're on Apple. We're on Spotify. We're on Google. We have an RSS feed, et cetera, et cetera. Just click the little button on the, on the uh, player. My name is Jeff Dickey Chasens. I'm the job board doctor, and you've been listening to the only podcast that focuses on the business of connecting candidates and employers. That's all for now. We'll see you next time.